The next piece is going to be the wheel and axle assembly. Um, these pieces are pretty tightly attached together, so I'm not going to try to pull them apart. Uh, I'm able to get the dimensions with them together. But I still am going to make it as two different pieces. The wheel is one piece and the axle is another piece. You can see that the wheel is actually two different uh, colors there with white plastic and black plastic. It appears as if it was manufactured in some way that they're fused together permanently. Uh, it doesn't appear to be painted, but a different type of plastic. Uh, but I'll just model it as a single part and apply different colors of materials to the surfaces that I need. So inside Inventor, I've got a new part open. And I'm going to start by making a sketch. And for this wheel, I'm going to revolve it. Um, so I'm going to start modeling it from the, from the beginning with that in mind. I'm going to start by creating a line that's going to represent the center axis of the wheel. Um, and I know that measured to be 0 0.550. That's the basically the width of the wheel. And I'm going to make that line a center line by selecting it and choosing center line up top. That's going to help me when I want to dimension lines uh, to that center line as what will eventually be diameters. And I'm going to place some lines down that are going to represent the, the profile of my wheel. There's a little bit of a, a small back to the hub, so I'm going to draw that. And then when it gets to the tire, it returns back out in thickness a little. The tire has some curved edges, but I'm going to add those as fillets later on. Then inside the hub, there's a little bit of a shelf there. Uh, and then there is a two arcs, one arc for the inside of the hub and one arc for the hub cap. So I'll use the arc tool to place two arcs about there and about there. Well, some of this is just going to be um, not measured, but just what looks good. Um, but the things that are measured, I can start placing some measurements. I know that the outside dimension of the wheel is 1.54. Now, if I click on the center line in the top line there, I can get an actual uh, di uh, diameter dimension to place. So it'll be 1.54. I was also able to measure from the inside, uh, and I know that to be 0 0.305. I know the diameter of the hub cap to be 0.623. I know the diameter of the entire wheel hub to be 1.22. Just down a little bit. Uh, I want the tire to be the same width on the inside and the outside. So I'll do a horizontal constraint between these two points. I want uh, this to be, uh, I, I was able to measure the outside dimension of the wheel of the, of the tire, and that's 5.515. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to constrain the tire to be centered on the hub, so lock that in place. This one here does not have a dimension because it doesn't show how far back here. It's a little bit difficult to measure, but my best measurement is that it was about three hundredths. So I'll dimension this line here, 2.03. And then these two arcs are really hard to measure. Um, Really, it's just I wanted to approximate what it looks like. Um, one thing, though, is I know I want the uh, the hub cap here to be a, a spherical um, section, uh, so I don't want there to be a divot or a point on it. So to make sure that's true, I want to constrain the center point to be horizontal of the origin. So I'll grab the center point of that arc and click on the origin, and that's going to make sure that this is a um, a full arc once it's revolved. And then here I want to just bring it in a little bit. It'll add a little bit more profile to the hub um, and it will 
it will have the rest of the hub not be uh, too flat. Up here, I'm not going to dimension this. This is just a small detail, which is probably more a result of the manufacturing process where there's a little bit of a ledge there. I'll just leave that as it is. So even though I do have a few unconstrained and undimensioned points on my sketch, I'm just going to leave them as they are because I have to sort of infer what they are anyways. I'll finish this sketch, and then when I go to revolve, it will automatically revolve my shape because it knows uh, I have a center line there and only one closed loop. So it'll know as I must want to revolve about that center line. A couple more details and some color changes. Uh, that radius that I want to put on the tire itself, I'll do as a fillet that is 0 0.065. So I'll choose these two edges and change the fillet to 0 0.065. And then um, to set this to the, oh, and then it also I do want a hole in the back for where the axle will get inserted. Uh, so the hole size that I want to have is going to be 0 0.25 to a uh, depth of 0.25 and diameter of 0.115. So I want to choose a concentric hole for that. Depth of, um, 0.25, diameter 0.115, I'm going to make a flat bottom hole. And now to add a material color, I'm going to change the base color to white material. And then I'm going to color the parts that are supposed to be black. So I will select like this hub surface that's supposed to be black. And then I can go to the material, or then I can right click and go to the properties. And there I can change the material. I'm going to choose anodized black. It's a nice deep black. And I will just change that surface. I'll do the same for all of the surfaces of the tire. I can select multiple surfaces by holding down shift when I click. And also. Actually, that is all I need to select. I'll select this surface right here, leave the other one white. So I can right click, go to properties. I'll choose anodize black again. And now the wheel is fully modeled. Let's save the wheel part. And I'll make a new part for the X standard part. The axle is just going to be a long uh, uh, cylinder. So I can create it with the cylinder tool. And I'll choose a plane. I want my axle to be 0.118 in diameter. And then the extrusion is going to be the distance I measure between the two wheels, which is 0.165, plus a half, a quarter of an inch into each wheel where I'm going to insert it. So it'll be a total of 0.165 plus 0.5. I'll just let the computer figure that out. Press OK. I'll change the uh, material here to. Uh, Choose aluminum, polished, and I can save that axle. So to create the axle, it's another part, which is really just a cylinder. So I'm going to use the cylinder tool. The diameter I want is 0.115, or 118. And then the Actually, it's extruded uh, the distance between the wheels, which is 1.685, plus the amount I have to insert into the wheels, which is a quarter inch on either side or half an inch total. Then I need the, I'll change the material. I'll change it to uh, polished aluminum material and save that as the axle. 
then I'll assemble it with my wheels. So I'll close those parts. I'll do a new assembly. I'll place in the axle. Then I'll place in two copies of the wheel to assemble this I will use an insert constraint so that's the fourth type of constraint I want to choose the bottom hole of the hole and then the end of the axle and then repeat I'll save this is my wheel axle assembly and then I'll open up my assembled car so far and place in two of my wheel axle assemblies and then I want to insert these in place to do that I'll also use an insert like in this circle here the circle at the base. But before I apply it, I'm going to revolve around to look from the end. And you can see that there is extra space on one side. I will need an offset to place it properly in here. And I can calculate that offset by doing uh, the difference between the width of my base and the length of my axle divided by 2. So the width of my base so the width of my axle is 1.685 minus the width of my base, which was 1.565. And then I'll put that whole thing in parentheses and divide it by 2. And that will give me a perfect alignment on either side. So I'll apply, or I'll just copy that real quick so that I can use it again. And then I will do the same thing with my other wheel and axle assembly. Choose that section there, choose that there, place in the same offset, and I now have my wheels assembled with my base.